Hello theme park enthusiasts and welcome back to Planet Coaster. In this episode, we're going to go ahead and put in a couple of flat rides into the park here. So I've gone ahead, I know I wanted to put in a chair plane and a uh, carousel here, and I wanted them in front of the monster. That way they sort of give the visual representation that would be had by a guest as they're coming into the park. You have these small lighted flat rides in front of the very grand giant wooden roller coaster that's in the background. So we're going to go ahead and put in these flat rides to begin with in this episode and then we're going to move on to a couple of other ride types uh, mostly for getting people around the park but also to add to the enjoyment of the overall experience. So at this point I was trying to sort of loop the uh, the path around the, the ride here, or the queue line, found that didn't work, and the more I thought about it, the more that just wasn't what I really wanted. So, what I end up doing here instead, after a few minutes of trial and error, is that I actually take the path and I split it in two, and I put the rides in the middle of that path. So I go with this snake-like pattern at first, I think about it, I realize, you know what, the path is just going to have to be adjusted overall. So, I go ahead and split it off to the sides here. Then I make these connections over there. Not exactly happy with the one connection as it required that I put in some fencing to it. Wasn't exactly the way I wanted it, but it was the way that I had to have it, it seems. So, I will probably play around with that at a point in time, just off camera, trying to get it to look the way I want. I was having a lot of issues with the overall uh, ground here. I kept wanting to either cut into the ground or to boost the ground up. Just could not get it to be flat the way I wanted to. Uh, but overall, I'm not too, too worried about that because in the end, I do plan on putting a lot of planting into this area. So I think that will eliminate most of this issue. Uh, for right now, I've left it somewhat blank, as you will see toward the end of the episode, but I do put in a few themed pieces just to increase the actual look of the line and such. As I said, long term though, my plan is to really surround these two rides with some flowers and hedges and things of that nature, really make the area very pretty to walk along on either one of the paths, and I will put in some railings along the paths, just not the railings that come natural with the pathways. Um, I sort of wish that the fencings and stuff just automatically could be attached to paths just by selecting one of the different path, uh, different fencings and such, but just does seem to fight a little bit in those cases. As I said here, I was having all kinds of trouble with the actual ground level and stuff, just did not want to work the way I wanted it to, but in the end, I end up getting the ride sort of where I wanted it. Here I realized, you know, I want this path to be closer to the coaster instead of as far away as it was. That's when I sort of realized that all of the bushes, as I said in one of the earlier episodes, are connected to the building. I regretted choices I had made at that point in time, but there wasn't much I could do about it and I wasn't about to go back. As you can see at this point, I had said in previous videos, I worked on multiple things at the same time. And when I was working on the carousel and the chair planes, I had not put in the lighting on the roller coaster yet. As you'll see throughout the video, there will be more and more lighting on that roller coaster as we go along, because I would do that off camera, then I would come back and work on one of these rides or work on the gondola ride or things of that nature, and just go back and forth because of the fact that doing all of the lighting for that coaster was really a burden. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. It was very tiring to do so. So I wanted some break from that, and I wanted to put in a few other small rides here that I thought would look nice in the park. Now, all of this is subject to change as far as like the path textures and things of that nature. I'm putting them in now with the wood simply because of the fact that I thought that it looks nice um, and the path for the roller coaster was in wood. But the reality is, most likely as time goes on, I'm going to change these exterior paths to be a different material, more like asphalt or something like that. So that way the 
indoor paths will be out of wood, but the ones that are going to be out and in the elements and such would be out of a material that would be much more friendly to that element. Um, here I'm putting in the fast track to these rides. I do go ahead and adjust the ride sequences for now to make them really attractive to guests because I wanted a bunch of people to come and ride these things at the beginning of the of my park and such. But as time has gone on here, I've realized I really don't want that in the long run. So I have taken those ride sequences out and I've gone ahead and put the rides back to sort of standard. I'm hoping that people will still come and ride them because of the fact that they are going to be well detailed as far as the gardens and such, but I would rather have them having smaller queues that are more appropriate to the actual ride quality versus having the long queues that are sort of just abnormal because I've adjusted the ride sequence. In this park, I want everything to sort of operate as it is intended to operate. I will put in some extra things. As you'll see here, I'm, like for the chair planes, for example, I'm going to go ahead and put in some water features because that's something I've seen at a couple of different amusement parks in different portions of the world that they do have like water that squirts up and can spray the people who are on the ride. At this point, I just sort of put them in, but I will in the future, uh, I do it off camera, but I do want to adjust those so that it actually sprays only on one segment of the ride. And I have made that change, I believe, so it should still soak the gas, but only at a particular time on the ride. So it goes off at that specific time each and every time. Here I'm putting in the train, and I know this is the particular area that I want as the entrance to the park. As I said, I haven't set this up where they have to pay to enter the park, um, but in reality, if this was a real park, you would have already paid somewhere in that tunnel area or before you got into the tunnel, so that when you're coming into this area, it's just all about enjoyment and actually just enjoying the view of it. So I wanted the train to be a part of that view, and so I wanted it to really have a grand look to it as you were coming into the park. Now the train uh, entrance here, will change either in this video or in the next video uh, but what I originally go with in the video is not the way it will stay I did something and I'll talk about it when we get there but there is a reason I decided to change it but here I went ahead and I put the train going through the wood structure of the roller coaster again I wanted a lot of things to interact with that coaster so that way you really got the visuals of it going on and so guests would be attracted to go onto the coaster at a point in time while they were at Appleford Amusement Park. I also wanted to get some nice views of the lake that I had created in the background there and I also wanted a tunnel to go onto this railroad here. As I said, yes it is a transport ride so the main purpose is for guests to be able to get around the park but I did want it to be something that people also enjoyed. <clears throat> and so with that in mind I wanted to go ahead and uh, set it up in such a way that it would have an interest level for it. Here I just realized that I had not changed the outfits on all of my staff in the different locations to be color coordinated for the park, so I went ahead and did that real fast. Now back to the train, I wanted to put in a station over here. I ended up having four stations sort of in the four corners, or the four sides of the park I would say. So there's one that's north, one that's south, one that's east, and one that's west. So that way you can sort of get around the park very easily. You can get on and off the train to get to the different areas of the park. As I said, this back corner is uh, going to be sort of a garden area in the end with one major ride in it that we will probably get to in a couple weeks time here. Um, but so if you're wanting to sort of do a garden walking tour, you can go to that stop of the train. If you're wanting to go to a kids area, there will be a different stop for that. If you're wanting to either get to the front entrance or you're leaving the front entrance, you can go ahead and take this station right here. And then there'll be another entrance on the other side just to get some other rides that are gonna be over in that area. So I wanted to not have any major turns or snaking of the train in that area. So I just had to delete a little bit of track to get it to work exactly as I wanted to have the stations where I want. Everything is set up pretty much there. I wanted to add one more car onto the train, so I was having to fight with the different train uh, stations in order to make that possible. But in the end, I am able to get it so that each train is pulling three cars. Originally here, I have it running on four trains. 
And as I'm working on some other things in the park, I've realized four trains is excessive for this park. So I will go ahead and I've reduced it down to two trains now. Yes, there are the four stations, but really the trains are going to come around often enough that you're still able to get on and off perfectly fine without much of a challenge at all. And I felt like four trains, as I said, was just excessive. Two really works out in a way that just fits and seems natural. Here again, for some reason, the ground was giving me a bunch of problems and was making it where the, uh, the path wouldn't connect the way I had hoped it would. So I had to fight with it a bit, but I was able to get it for the most part where I wanted it. And then I sort of made a feature out of it by connecting that path in the same area to it. So one thing I've sort of learned is if you're having an issue in Planet Coaster, sometimes the best thing you can do is not to try to hide that issue, but instead to sort of make it an obvious thing. So in this case, since it was struggling so much to connect that area, I went ahead and connected it in a unique way, tried to make it more of a focal point. For now, the main part is just going ahead and connecting these two, uh, these different stations up to the path so that it's all connected and the thing is then operational. Here, I knew I wanted to have this come down on this side and I had in my mind what I was wanting to do as far as construction of this area. So I knew I wanted turns in a certain way so that I could hopefully be able to construct it in a visual manner that was what I was hoping for. Um, you will see that I have to go through it multiple times to sort of get what I want out of it. But in the end, I feel like it actually did achieve what I was hoping. Now just sort of setting those up as wood. As I said, I probably will change those external paths from wood in the future here. Uh, to something other than that, like asphalt or concrete, just so it seems a bit more realistic. The wood planking, the wood decking, I like for the interior rides, but not so much on these exterior areas. So then, same thing here as I do with the coaster at many points. Now that I've put in the trains, I feel like going back and working on the other rides a little bit, and... Oh, I also wanted to put in a uh, fast pass station so that way people could actually get a fast pass who were wanting one. Um, so I went ahead and put in that booth. I do plan on putting quite a few buildings around that area and I will go ahead and do that in upcoming episodes. Um, but for right now, as I said, it's more for, uh, function instead of actual uh, practical usage. Here I'm just putting in the fast pass stations for these, uh, for each of the different stations as well. The only one that will not have a fast pass is the one at the very front of the park, and that's just because of the way I wanted that designed. It didn't really have the ability to have a fast pass to it. So here I am back at the chair plane, putting in sort of the lighting package that I wanted to have. As I said, this park is very much about the lights that it will have, as well as the, uh, I, I want a nighttime image for the park. So having these lights throughout as well as underground here, yes, they stick up slightly. And again, that's intentional because I don't want it to be like ultimate quality. I don't want it to be Disney level. I want it to sort of show the things of the lighting or the speakers and things of that nature. So I get those put into place. Um, I'm looking here through the different water jets to find the one that I figure is the appropriate height for the ride find this one sort of settle on it and as I said for right now I just put them into place here so that they go off at points in time in the future then after this video I do go ahead and set them to a sequencer for the ride so that they only go off on the one portion of the ride itself and so that way the people are spinning out nicely and will hopefully be nice and soaked by the water that's shooting up I sort of offset them in between the lights, so that way you have a light, then a uh, water squirter, then another light, so on and so forth, all the way around the ride. Once that was set, I went ahead and hired a few more staff. Didn't even think about at that point adjusting their uniforms to fit to the color scheme of the park and stuff, but I do go back later and fix all of that. 
So I feel like the water is working fairly well here. Possibly not soaking the guests as much as I would have hoped it would, but it is working nicely. Change the price up there uh, since people are enjoying the ride quite a bit. Then I go ahead and do a bit of light theming here for the carousel, and I put these different uh, carousel horses in between the different portions of the queue, just to give some visual interest to the queue overall. We'll go ahead and uh, rotate the horses around and do a few in the opposite direction as well there. As I said, very, very light theming right now. I will come back through here and I will put in uh, fencing and planters and stuff like that that will make it much more visually appealing in the future. But for now, I just wanted something simple there to go with those two rides. As you can see, in between that and uh, what we're going to be doing now, I did go ahead and work more on the exterior of the monster's building, but it was a lot of just putting basic windows in and lighting around some windows and theming and such. Not something I felt was necessary to cover in a video. Here, I wanted to do like a little entrance to each of these flat rides. So I really liked the look of this overall, uh, I don't know if you want to call it a roof or what. So I figured, you know, I'd get some of these decorative pedestals here, or these columns, and I'd put them in the four corners, theme them to the color scheme of the park as I want it to be, and then we'll go ahead and use that as sort of our entrance for each of these rides. Really, it seemed like I could not get the pedestals exactly angled the way I wanted them to be, but in the end here, we're able to get them Fairly close. Then I will save this as a design, so that way I could use it again for other exterior rides as I want to. Just looking for a sign that I can put the name of the ride on. I like this sort of ticket look one here, so I went with it. As I said, oh, we went ahead and put some lights on it here. As I said, I want everything in the park to have this sort of lighted texture and style to it. So, this ride is no different. Now here, since then, I've learned that I should have just copied one side over to the other. Made my life simpler than that way. But, was still learning at this point. Hadn't realized that that was the simpler way to go about it had to learn the hard way, found out I was failing at it, then go ahead and move it over and attach it here. Another thing I wasn't using at this point was the uh, snap feature when moving things, which makes it easier to adjust in increments instead of having to uh, swing it in a great level of detail on my own. But in the end, was able to get it to work properly, comes out looking nice or as I wanted it to. As I said, here we go ahead and uh, get it. We make it into a blueprint of its own. And that way I can go ahead and use it for entrances in the future. this particular one due to the fact that we had this little divot in the ground here again having a lot of trouble with the ground on this particular episode not exactly sure why but I needed to put in some extra columns just to make it look uh, realistic in the way it was as I said I will hide most of those divots with plantings and such so I'm not too worried about it I just don't know why they're occurring in the first place that's sort of the question I've got going on right now but it is what it is we'll make it work Here I have not realized that the sign's on the wrong side yet. Now I did, so I swing it around here, and then I put these into the ground.
originally I was thinking of also putting them at the exits of the ride, and then I thought that would sort of affect the view that I was going for from the entrance. So I decided in the end to scrap this idea after looking at it for a moment. It just, like I said, it, it's too much going on then. And the whole purpose of this was to have something that is there, but at the same time isn't blocking the view of the rides and sort of the old fashioned, old world type of feel that I wanted this park to be having. So basically all of this putting it in and adjusting it and stuff just doesn't work out in the end. Especially with this one I sort of see it because then I can't see the carousel with it. And the entire point is to be able to see these rides. So I scrap those, I just leave the entrance ones. I like the entrance ones. The exit ones weren't a bad idea, it's just they're not going to work with the actual visual style of the park. So from there, we jump right into the next ride that I want to put in, which is a gondola ride. So with this, we're going to go sort of on a visual tour around the park. Originally, I just had this going through this area here. I knew I was going to have a fairly large uh, ride back in that corner there. And I know I want to have a garden section next to that large ride. So I felt that this would fly over that area and look really nice. Then I was talking with my fiance and she said well why doesn't it interact with the coaster and I thought you know what you're right it should interact with the coaster so I'm setting it up here this way for now um, I actually do keep the buildings pretty much where they're located in the end but you will see here in a little while that the actual path of the gondolas does change fairly extensively so that it actually goes through the coaster it doesn't go over the gardens as much which upon thinking about it more I don't think it would I, I I think you want to keep the garden sort of as this beautiful area, and you wouldn't want all the pillars of a gondola ride going through there and sort of obstructing that view. So with that in mind, I don't mind the change that I end up making to it. I think it works out better this way. So we do get it going here at first. We put in all this pathing and such, and as I said, then afterwards she sort of makes the suggestion it should deal with the coaster and I do have to edit that station in particular to make it work. Here I realized I hadn't typed in the name of the ride yet, so I needed to put that onto that sign. Checking how this is going, people are getting onto the train, it's working as it should be. Um, and I start thinking about the design of the area here with the train. Originally I was going to use these arches because I really do like the arches overall, but they just don't fit what I'm looking for in my structure here. So I end up scrapping those. I start out going with this stone structure. As I said earlier in the video, this particular train station does change significantly from what I have here originally. Um, the problem I have with it is this stone structure ends up being very castle-like, and instead of going away from castle, which is what I should have done, I end up playing into it more and really going with castle theming to the structure. And this is the entrance to the park. So I do want it to be a focal point for the park, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized this is an amusement park. I'm liking the sort of wooden and whitewashed walls that I've got going on and such. I don't want it to be something with a theme to it at all. I'm working very hard not to have a theme really to the park. And the last thing I need is the first thing that the guests see being a castle-like structure. I don't want little kids remembering it as the castle park or anything of that nature. So all of this work right here, I I'm pleased with the design. It looked neat in its own way, but it just doesn't fit what I'm wanting for this park. So it will all go away in the end here.
here I do set up the lettering that will be on the front of that entrance area and that I felt was really significant for the park. I really wanted its name in big lights and to really stand out for the park overall and I do feel like this was a good addition to the park so even when I do remake this entrance here you will see that these lights do stay because it I feel like I said is sort of key to how the park is overall. Originally, I was thinking about just putting the word Appleford in, and then I thought, you know, I think it should have Amusement Park on there as well to really designate what this place has become. I think at one point in time, when it was in its younger years, it may have just said Appleford. But then as time went on and it got more into the rides and less about, say, the garden area in the back or away from other things, it became an amusement park. But as I said, the front entrance there right now, the way it is, very castle-like, is a theme park. I don't want that for the park. So that goes away, and I go back more towards the amusement park uh, route. Here then, as I said, I've talked to my fiance. She sort of pointed out that, you know, the gondola should interact with the roller coaster. So I take out that one station. I still want it in pretty much the same location, but I go ahead and have the gondola ride come across the roller coaster there as it does, which actually works really well. There's oftentimes as you're coming across there, the roller coaster will be going around the loop and stuff or around its path. And so you'll get some interaction between the gondola and the roller coaster, and I really like that overall. Um, so then the station goes back in somewhat in the same footprint as where it was before. Slightly different, but not terribly. And we're able to then go ahead and fill in the ground for the most part. Again, little issues with the ground just not wanting to cooperate. 
I did end up having to move a tree or two there just because they were going to interact with how the gondola was, but I do feel like it's much better in the location that it's in now. Here I'm removing the railing that comes with the queue lines naturally. And then here I start playing around with how I want to do this bridge. And originally I'm going with the stonework here. And the more I think about it in between this time period and when I work on it the next time, as I said, I really am starting to be struck by that this is turning into a very castle-like area. And this is not, you know, Appleford's castle or something of that nature. This is an amusement park. It shouldn't have this level of theming to it. I also do realize this particular area, I do want to leave the handrails on because of the fact that this would be dangerous for people otherwise. That is a giant drop into water. Yes, it is into water, but it would still be dangerous for the guests. So I did want to go ahead and put the railing in. Um, with that in mind, I was okay with the bridge overall the way it is. And instead, I wanted to focus on adding some lighting to it. Uh, again, it was something where lighting's a big thing for me with this particular park. And so I wanted to be able to get lighting that goes across the bridge as well. And similar to what I was doing on the roller coaster at the time, I wanted to go ahead and use some uh, strings of the fairy lights to light up the area. What I had figured on doing was if I could connect the fairy lights to the different posts here, then I would know how much I had to space the post apart, and I could go ahead and do that as a feature all the way across the bridge. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm just copying the different pieces. Originally, I thought about making them into a blueprint and using them that way. Realized that that's not the most efficient thing in the world, and instead I just copy them in this manner and just drag them across that way. The only problem I'm having is once in a while I'll get a tree that I'm also copying so I do have to be cautious of that slightly. And I take the whole thing and I move it to the other side here. I do flip it around so that way the lights are on the proper side. Then I realized, wait a second, I had put the wire so it was actually on the wrong side on that one. So it was the one that actually needs to get flipped around. The other one was actually correct the way it was. So I make that adjustment here just to make sure that it lines up properly. And we've got these nice lights along the bridge. I do go back at a point in time and also put similar lights down into the cave entrance of the area. Um, as I said, for the sake of the story here, that cave actually leads to parking that's on the other side of a road. There's actually just going to be the major road in the area of Graves Point here that goes through there. And so you have to go uh, under that road to get to your car and such. So it's not that they're suddenly being coming out of a cave or out of a tunnel. It's that this is just the tunnel that actually leads to the car park on the other side. So now that I've got that taken care of, I want to get back to the gondola areas here, and I want to create the buildings that will be used for the uh, the stations. Just wanted something fairly simple as far as the buildings, and then I go ahead and theme it up with lighting as well as some additional beams and stuff, just to make it look good. So originally I had started with those archways, didn't like them in the end. I wanted something a bit simpler than that, so I went with these beams instead. Then decided no, they didn't look quite right. I am going to do a building that's going to be sort of beams like that at a point in time most likely, but this just didn't seem like the right place for it. So I went back with the archways um, because I wanted a final back wall to the air to this uh, ride on the opposite side here. So I felt like I needed to have actual structure to it to hold up that wall. Because I just didn't want the whole ride apparatus showing through like it would have if I had just used the beams. So we're just using some beams here in order to uh, hide the edges a little bit of the building. Just to give it a little bit of a different look. 
go ahead and I make them uh, into the purple instead, because I thought that the purple looked a little bit better for them than the white did. Then again, we add our lights here. To once again, continue with that theme of light throughout the park. I bring those over to the other side. But I also decide I want them on the roof of the building. So as I said before, if you have a little issue, like here there's this little line in the roof. So instead of trying to hide that line, let's make it into something that's a focal point. So we go ahead and put the lights along it. We also put lights along this edge here. And basically we're sort of creating architecture of the building through the lights themselves. Realistically, I probably should have put a board where I did put those lights there because since I put the lights, it would seem natural that there should be a board in that case as well. Same thing on this side. There's that little line there that's created by the two different pieces of roof. So we'll put some lights along it. And on the interior here, I go with a fairly simple light. Um, I just have those hanging from the wall there. They're sort of half into the wall. And again, that's intentional because I just want them sort of be looking old fashioned, but they're fairly modern in how they're attached. And I come over to the other gondola building here. And with this building, I wanted to go with this sort of Bavarian style building, but just fit it into this park. So I went with a color scheme that I felt fit the park in the uh, white purple, but I left the bottom still that concrete color that they had in the game. I felt that it fit best for what was going on there. And I just wanted to do something a little bit different, so I wanted windows. And the Bavarian building was one of the few buildings that actually had windows where you could look in. And I wanted people to be able to see the gondolas going around from the exterior. So that was sort of my motivation here. Here I'm putting in these little ledges and the whole purpose of them. I know they're supposed to be supports for like, uh, you know, beams and things of that nature, but I felt like, you know what, they could actually hold up a lantern quite well, and that's exactly how I have them. They're holding up these lanterns here, just to give that uh, visual interest and at the same time give lighting to this area. Lighting, I find, is a challenge in some of the buildings because of the fact that the people will be moving close to the walls, so if you have lighting that sticks out too far, it actually then clips through the people. I don't want that at all in my park. So I wanted some lighting that sort of hung up nice and high and at the same time is very snug to the wall so it stays out of the way of the people. Basically then looking for roof pieces that I felt fit with the Bavarian theme that we had going on. I knew in this particular case I had wanted to do a flat roof because I wanted to put something on top of it here to add a little bit more visual interest to the place. So I had to find a roof that fit for what I was looking for. Settle on that one. It's not exactly perfect, but it will work. And the main purpose of it is to allow me to put these different ornaments onto the roof. Once I select ones that I felt fit, I go ahead and use these columns to give them a little bit more height and to make them look like they're a little, you know, observation area or something, even though there's really no way within this building that they could be used. So I change up the colors so that they work with the rest of the building. And then I put some windows into them because, as I said, I want it sort of like it could be an observation tower area, even though it doesn't work in that aspect. Then we come back to our lights here. As you will see on almost every building that I do in the park, we will have lights to it. Part of the reason I wanted to have this structure for this building was because I wanted to be able to put the lights around the windows. So it was important to me to have those windows so that way I could do the lighting around it, give a little bit more visual to the park at night. 
Because to me, this is a park that during the day, it looks nice. But really at nighttime, I feel like is when it really comes to life and it has the true beauty of the park showcased. Again, here we have this odd little uh, raised portion for the roof. So let's highlight it by putting the lights right into it there. I decided to put the lights onto this area as well. Probably a bit excessive, but you know what? The more lights, the merrier, I say. So let's go ahead and put them on there. Of course, with the angles of the little roof there, it is a bit challenging, but we make it work in the end. And I think it comes out looking pretty nice. I decided I want to jump back to this one because I hadn't put lights at the very top of the roof here. And considering the fact that this is a gondola ride, so the people are going to be at an elevated area right near the building, I wanted to make sure that I had some lights up there. So I moved back to this one again, put some lights along this area. As I said, looking back on it now, I really probably should have put some purple beams in these areas as well. If I'm going to have lights there, it probably would have been wise to have the purple beams also in that area. But I didn't, and like on this side, I sort of felt like I didn't want beams there because of the fact of the actual apparatus for the ride itself and how it was going to function. I also think that I went with some other lighting for a moment there, just to give myself a break of doing this lighting, because getting the angles and stuff on this ridge is a bit of a challenge. I realized I had put those lights on incorrectly and I had put them above the line, so I dropped them back down there. Then we have this nice little on-ride of the gondola. Gives you an idea of how it's going to look in-game. And with that, we're coming to the end of this video. If you enjoyed the video though, please go ahead and click that like button. If you've not already, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon, so that you're aware when I produce new videos in the future. Thank you, I hope to see you all again for the next episode of Planet Coaster, and for more of Appleford Amusement Park.